Hello, guys. So Bill Mayer was recently invited to The View, which is essentially a Marxist talk show where a bunch of ultra-privileged, bitter, brainwashed women spew nonsense on a regular basis. Why such a show even exists and why anyone would ever watch it is one of the great mysteries of life. But at any rate, it's there. As for Mayer, he also has his own talk show, and he's basically on the same political side as Bihar, and even their origins seem to match. Of course, these can be said about the majority of the mainstream media, which is pretty much a monopoly at this point, with the talking heads hardly ever confronting each other on anything except the most insignificant and meaningless points. That being said, in this particular case, Mar and the Witches of the View did bring up some slightly more controversial topics than what's usually being discussed on these shows. So let us listen what they had to say. And by the way out there, well, that hat that you keep wearing, that red hat that says make America great again, that tells people that you go along with this. So you might yeah. as well just put a swastika on the hat. See, this is why most people laugh at these morons. They keep crying wolf nonstop. In fact, they made it their business to play the victim even when they couldn't possibly be in less danger or have an easier life. And despite all this, they still expect us to somehow take them seriously. Don't well, do that. The, Don't that's do that. Not uh, look, I'm not going to defend Donald Trump ever. You're not going to defend him even when he's clearly being treated unfairly? That just comes to show us that he's really not that different from the witches at the end of the day. But I, under, but I, I would never say that we should put the swastika on the cap because I think you can hate Donald Trump. You can't hate everybody who likes him. It's half the country. I don't want to live in that country. I don't want to live in the country where I hate half the country and I don't hate half the country. How dare you disagree with me? <laughs> you know a society is doomed when something like this has to be spoken out loud. In a healthy society, no one would ever even have to form thoughts like this to begin with. The witches live in a bubble, plus they make a very good living off saying ridiculous crap like this, so it's not a big surprise coming from them. But in reality, a MAGA hat just represents people wanting a drastic change from the elitist, aggressive, anti-middle class, and anti-family politics that took over the United States many decades ago. Whether Trump actually brought such a change is completely irrelevant, since this witch's problem is not simply with Trump, but with literally everyone that wants any kind of real change in the country. And that's because people like her don't want anything to change. In fact, they fear change more than anything. They know that in a healthy world, the best they could hope to become is a waitress or maybe a nail artist. Well, I had a different question, but I, but but it struck me that in, in the first segment, you used the term woke and you said that woke is what was sort of ruining everything. And I know that you're... A, no, I didn't a, say ruining everything. I said that's why Trump could get reelected. That's why Trump could get reelected. Yeah. So He's actually right about that. Wokeness is probably the strongest force that pushes people towards the right, simply because it goes against basic human nature and life itself so aggressively that everyone with a bit of common sense in him will get repulsed by it and run the opposite way. So I, I just, the term woke has been, in my view, co-opted by the right and weaponized and bastardized. And um, so I was surprised to hear you use the term because historically, as you know, because I think you're quite brilliant, that woke is a word used by the black community to note that we must be aware of social injustices. But words and migrate. So why, why is that a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. And, and originally that was uh, absolutely a great thing. Alert to injustice. Who's not for that? But words do migrate. Now, I'll use any term you want. Okay. Because maybe that is a word that's triggering. And so we you can just tell this is a true leftist debate. They're like, let's not use the words that are the most fitting because it may hurt someone's poor little feelings. We, let's not use that word. I don't know. Want to call it the, the super far left? But don't tell me the left had... the super far right. We well, talking about the left. Well, then okay, I'm but, but we talked about that. I mean, I think we agree about the danger of the super far right. And I, well, you know, I can't say it enough. I think they're the bigger threat. And once again, it's proven just how close all of these people actually are when it comes to the big picture of politics. They are all so delusional that they think the biggest threat in the U.S. is the barely existent far right. While the far left has become so powerful and rampant that you can't even hide from it anymore unless you live somewhere completely off grid. Um, but don't tell me that the left hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm old enough to remember when it was the conservatives who hated the Jews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, That's true. Most politicians and pundits in the West can hardly decide who to hate at any given moment. 
since they have no morals or principles and simply follow whatever rules are set for them by their bosses. And watch how they don't even react to it other than trying to brush over it and swipe it under the rug. If they could, they would probably try to erase it from history altogether. That was a joke. But, uh, <laughs> too dark, but, too but, dark. But, well, Welcome maybe it is, but it's, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you know, if, if I had any doubt that I was right about the change that's happened in the left, watching people protest for a terrorist organization like Hamas, uh, that straightened me up pretty quick. Ironically, those people were all brought into the country by leftist policies, and all of you nodding imbeciles also happen to be leftists. I don't know if they realize the irony of it all, but judging by their reaction, probably not. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that because I, I think I, you're almost a free speech absolutist. You believe totally yes. in the right to say what you believe, but I think a lot of us were disturbed to see terrorist flags being waved on American college campuses <laughs> and seeing this... Um, a generation that may, some I think genuinely care about the play of the Palestinians, I think most Americans do, but some who seem to be embracing a terrorist organization over the nation of Israel. What do you make of this moment? What do you think it's a result of? How do we fix it? Well, I, I mean, it's just astounding to me that they can't tell the good guys from the bad guys. <clears throat> I mean, just the, morally. It's almost as if you're projecting. I mean, let me tell you, if you're for Hamas, just live in Gaza for a day. And I'm not talking about while the war is on. I mean, before the war. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you would go running and screaming and begging to live in Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. Sure, but not because of Hamas, but because of what the invaders are doing to the people of Gaza. A place that has your values. I mean, women have no, I mean, this is a show watched by a lot of women. Women have no rights right. in this place. And a lot of majority Muslim countries around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no equal rights as far as speech, dress, opportunities for education, uh, reproductive rights, freedom from sexual violence, freedom from sexual harassment. Careful, Bill. You're not supposed to mention any of those things in front of Femi commies. They're only programmed to cry about made-up issues, not problems that actually exist. The LGBTQ These, community as well. I mean, yes. you, you, of course, can't forget those. You, you, uh, that too. Uh, but you, you, you throw around the term apartheid. Mm -hmm. There is a gender apartheid in a lot of the world mm -hmm. where women are second-class citizens uh, at best. Are you, yeah. are you at but, all concerned about the innocent civilians that have been collectively punished and, and murdered, largely it, well, children and, and, and women? Of and course. are you at all concerned about of, the fact that the International Criminal Court just today issued a subpoena for uh, Bibi Netanyahu? Well, that's that's... Ridiculous, but it's a war. Why? It's a war because it's a war and they were attacked and they're defending themselves. Yes, a war that your so called defenders started. I'm nervous about saying anything against Biden. Of course, you are. In your world, he's untouchable. Everything he does is good. And of course, everything his opponents do is terrible because you're a biased hypocrite. Because I feel, as, you know, not that I have so much power, and, and you have some more than, we, than I do, obviously, but... Oh, I don't know about that. Are you afraid that you might, you know, inc influence the people who are on the fence? I, I... What are you talking about? Trying to influence people is all you do, all day long, every day. Of course, it's only okay if they're being influenced to believe what you personally believe. I think you lose all credibility. I, I do. I mean, my bond with my audience has always been I don't pull a punch. Yeah. My bond with my audience is you're not going to like everything I say, yeah. but you know I'm saying what I really think is true. Well, that's obviously not entirely true either, but at least he's not as blindly and consistently biased as the witches of The View. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments. And if you want to gain some sweet perks on this channel, such as having your name appear on my videos or requesting custom content, check out my Subscribestar page and pick a tier you like. Also, check out the other videos I have here, and I will see you in the next one.